In this video, we'll be taking a look at a multi-species flow in Simulia Fluid Dynamics Engineer, which can be used to represent the mixing of different gases or liquids. And this could be for something like a heat exchanger or um, some kind of catalyzing system, like a fuel cell battery pack or for carbon capture applications. So to get started, I have my parts in SOLIDWORKS here. And this time we've actually modeled the fluid region. This is not a requirement. You can automatically extract the fluid region, um, but we've just chosen to do so here. And I'll just save these files to 3D Experience platform. Once they're saved, we can launch directly into the Fluid Dynamics Engineer app by selecting our product, clicking the compass, and choosing the appropriate role or app here, which is Fluid Scenario Creation. And here we'll just name our simulation, as well as reduce the number of maximum iterations to 500 just to save time on our example. So we'll automatically create the project, and I highly recommend showing the assistant, which you can access under the standard toolbar. And under the model tab is where we can get started. Now, normally, if you were extracting the fluid region, I would use this model setup tab. But since we've already modeled the fluid region here, we'll go right down to fluid domain. And under the options, we'll say use part geometry. And we'll click the little plus sign and just start selecting the geometries that constitute the fluid domain. Once we have them all selected, we'll click OK and click OK. That's created under our abstractions folder, a fluid cavity. And then we need to assign some kind of section to that. So if you just had a single species or like a single gas, let's say, or liquid, you would use a fluid section. Uh, but we wanna, in this example, use a multi-species section so we can have mixtures of multiple gases or liquids. So for the support of the multi-species section, we'll select the fluid cavity, under the fluid cavity, the shrink wrap region that was created. And you can see we have a background material and then a material. Um, the background material you can think of as the carrier fluid or the dominant fluid. And that would be the case if you're using the passive multi-species approach. That assumes that you have uh, one kind of dominant fluid and then some other kind of trace fluids mixed in. Um, if we use active multi-species, then it really shouldn't matter so much which one is the background or not. But I'm going to search here. I want to use nitrogen as my background fluid. And you'll notice this one says with diffusivity, so you'll want to make sure that you have diffusivity. You want to make sure that you have diffusivity properties on your materials. if you're going to be using the multi-species approach. And we could click the plus sign to add more materials if needed. Under the materials folder here, you can see the material properties. If I double click on that, we can show you what I'm talking about here. So under the fluid dynamics section, I've just loaded in the diffusivity of nitrogen. And if you're going to be using compressible flow, You'll also want to load in an equation of state, which we're using here is just ideal gas law. Okay, so our model is checked off. We can go down to physics, we'll specify a physics behavior. We'll just leave this uh, mostly at the default settings, but this is where you can see the multi species model, which could be passive or active. In active multi species, the viscosities and densities of the various fluids um, actually affect the overall flow. So we could enable active multi-species here if you want to enable compressible flow. If you're expecting higher velocities or compressible effects, you can do this. And there's also this defog and demist model that's available with multi-species. This would let you get a prediction of um, condensation or evaporation. We'll click OK. 
Under our boundaries, we'll do a mass flow inlet. And I'm going to just select the inlet face right here and enter my mass flow rate. So I'm going to use 5e minus 5 kilograms per second. And you'll notice when we have multi-species enabled, we have mass fractions down here. So I'll do 50% oxygen. And when you click that, you'll see the background fluid also updates. So you're always summing up to one. Then we'll put a pressure outlet on the opposite side here. We'll leave it at zero gauge pressure. Under your recirculation conditions, you might want to pay attention to the mass fractions here. So if you did have some recirculation at the outlet, you know, what concentration of gas would you want to draw back in? So maybe I'll make that equivalent to um, the inlet condition. But one of the things we can do is actually absorb some of those concentrations of the different species or, or add more. So if we want to, um, say, absorb some of the oxygen as it passes through um, these channels here, then I could specify a wall condition. And under the multi-species condition for oxygen, I could say we have a constant mass flux and enter some value, uh, negative 0.01 kilogram per meter squared second. This is basically going to be like an absorption rate as the uh, fluid passes over these channels. And then I just need to select the, the wall faces. Um, I could probably take advantage of some kind of geometry sets or group to speed up the selection process, but there's a low enough number of them here that uh, we can just select them. Okay, and I also want to pay attention to the output requests. Um, these get created automatically as I add inlets and things. So your output one here is going to be basically your global output request. So I'd like to rename this global. This is going to be all your color plots of um, various values that you can plot. Um, so we just want to check and make sure that the species properties are being tracked. Also, how often you want to save this. Um, by default, it'll just save every you know, 100,000th iteration. So effectively, you'll just get one plot at the end of the study, which is fine for most steady state studies. Uh, then we have also output requests on our inlet, which I'll rename. And maybe I want to track the species properties there. And also output requests on our outlet, where I'll also track the species properties. So these will be uh, variables that you can plot during the solution and see like their convergence history. Now we can go and generate the mesh, which we're going to use the hex dominant mesh. And there is a handy little button here. You can click initialize from support and it'll estimate mesh sizes based on the geometry. Uh, but just to speed this up a little, I'm going to uncheck add boundary layers and we'll just set a maximum and minimum size of uh, one millimeter and see what that looks like. When we click the mesh button here, it'll mesh locally on our system. If you want to take advantage of um, cloud compute resources to mesh, then you could do that by just clicking OK and using the simulation checks option. So this is very crude, but if I'm happy with it as a starting point, I'll click OK. As a warning, if you click cancel, you'll actually lose the mesh that you generated. So I'll click OK. And if we want to see the cross section of this under the display tab, you can go to sectioning and disable the exact mesh cut. And then what I like to do is right click and go into the visibility manager where I can toggle off my contributing shapes. And now I can actually see the mesh cross section. If these wall conditions are getting in the way, then those are going to be hiding out under your flow section here. You could hide those wall conditions. Okay, again, this is just meant to be a very crude starting point. So when we're ready to simulate, we can go on down to simulate. 
uh, click the simulate button and then we'll get to choose whether we want to solve the analysis locally or taking advantage of the cloud resources that's up to you but I like to perform a very crude mesh um, analysis locally just to confirm that everything's working and then later on we can perform additional mesh refinement and do a cloud solve if we want to. Okay, so we see the simulation status window here and as soon as the solution begins we'll be able to go to our plots tab and see uh, things like our residuals and our convergence error. You can also see under your iterations tab um, the number of iterations here and we should also be able to see those inlet and outlet plots so if we want to look at say outlet average mass fraction of nitrogen we can see that's actually going up to 100 percent so that makes me think that we've absorbed all the oxygen through the channels okay we'll close our solver monitor window we can probably close our visibility manager for now too and we see a plot of gauge pressure Now if we go to a plot of velocity, we're going to see velocities that look like zero everywhere because our wall condition assumes uh, zero velocity at the walls, with the ideal wall condition. If we just click somewhere on the model, we can activate the plot sectioning and then we'll see inside the model there. And you can adjust this or just click the check mark. If you want to create uh, permanently a cut surface, you can do so right here. Just click OK to place that and we can see that you know we don't have quite even flow through the individual channels especially with this um, channel here seeing a little lower velocity but really the main thing we want to show here is the uh, properties of the species of the fluid so this is going to be the concentration of my oxygen and you can see that it comes in at around 50% and as we travel down the length of these channels, drops to effectively zero. So that at the outlet, we have only nitrogen. So this is an example of using the multi-species flow capabilities in Simulia Fluid Dynamics Engineer, which can be used for any multi-fluid mixing problem, but is especially useful when you have absorption or production of different species through the model, which could be used to approximate some chemical reaction or other changes in the concentrations. Hopefully you found this video helpful and let us know in the comments what type of content you'd like to see next.